Hello makers, I'm Catherine Harris with Sheer Stitchery and this is your spot for all things sewing and DIY. And today I wanted to share with you how you could make your very own bandana bib for either a cute little baby or in my case, my fur babies, my cute little puppies. So these bibs are reversible, so they have two sides and they have a nice little snap and you can make them from anything in regular cotton. I used a double gauze or you could also use knit fabric. So let's get to it. Let it go, what's the use in holding on? Can we find a now the first thing you're going to want to do is download the pattern. I will link that down below so that you can trace out whatever size you're looking for. And I outline on the sizes for both human infants as well as for puppies and full-size dogs. So there are size ranges that go a little bit smaller and a little bit larger than you would for a baby. And those are for your dog or canine sizes because these work great for either a dog or a baby. And then you can use fabric scraps. Now, in fact, a lot of what I have for my yardage is some fabric scraps because you don't need a lot of fabric unless you're making sort of a larger one, then you might need a little bit more than a scrap, but even a you know quarter of a yard of fabric or a quarter of a meter of fabric should be plenty to get quite a few out of there. Now you can choose two different fabrics so that they can be reversible or you can choose to have the same fabric. Another fun thing, especially if you're making it for a baby, is to have a fun print on one side and then you can use a terry cloth on the back side so it is more absorbent for when they're drooling and teething so that they don't get their shirt all wet. And once you have your pattern printed out, you're going to want to attach them together. Now, one thing I did have is layers on the pattern. So you can actually go on the side and you can click out any of the layers that you don't want to print. If you're only making a size extra small for a small puppy like my Cavapoos here, then you can just click out all of the large sizes and it'll only show you the small version of the bandana. And then you just need to tape your pattern together and then we can get stitching. Okay, so first we're going to prep the pattern and the fabric. So our pattern is just printable on US letter size. I like to fold over the dotted line edges and then just tape it in place to put this pattern together. Next, cut out the size that you want to use and then select your fabric. So I am folding mine. You can see the salvaged is the grain line and then that fold line is the salvage and should go along that grain line. Now this is particularly important when you're working with stretch fabric or double gauze like what I am using here. I like to use a rotary cutter because it's a bit more precise than using your shears. Now, if you are doing a double-sided bib that is going to be, or bandana that is going to be a different color, cut it out in a separate color. For this particular one, I am making it a solid color with this blue here. So I am going to cut two pieces out, a front and a back. Number two, we're going to stitch up our bandana. So we are going to place right sides together on the fabric and just match up all of the edges and then place your pins or clips in place. Because I'm making a really small sized version, these pins work quite nicely and give a nice precise area here. So next you are going to go in and you are going to mark an area that we are going to turn this. So we are going to mark about two inches. So I'm just using my grid here and we're going to stitch on either side, which means we're going to start on one side, stitch all the way around and leave a gap of two inches. Now, before we do this, you want to go ahead and use some woven fusible interfacing on the one side of the bandana, just in a rough rectangle to cover each edge of the bib. Then we can go ahead and trim around the corners. So with this, you can either notch if you're using a cotton fabric. So this is a notch right down here, and I'm going to notch these edges anyway. Do not trim away any of the excess where that opening is. And then with this, because I have a stretch fabric with this gauze, or if you're using a jersey knit, you can just trim down those seam allowances and you don't have to notch them. Next, we're going to turn this right side out. So I'm just going to flip this right side out, just reaching in there with my fingers to get each of the sides out. 
And then you can go ahead and grab your turner here. And this is just a point turner and it's just used to push out those points. You could use something like the blunt end of a pencil or a chopstick that also works quite well. Then you can go ahead and I like to use this glue based it. And this is often used in applique in quilting. Um, but I find it to be very, very useful with the double gauze fabric because it does not stay put and it doesn't like to be pressed. And when you press the double gauze, you kind of lose that scrunchiness. So it's going to distort. So I find this to be very easy. Then we're going to do a ladder stitch. If you want a full tutorial on the ladder stitch, I will link a video that I did down below on how to do that ladder stitch. But really, you're just taking one end of one side, putting a little bit through the needle, and then going over to the next side, just like a ladder, and continuing all the way down that two inch opening. So, as you're doing this, when you get to the very end of the opening, you are going to want to secure and knot your threads. Be sure to pull that line taut before creating that knot, just so you can hide any of those invisible threads. So, I just did two knots in here, and then I'm going to bury my needle in through the fabric just like so so it's completely hidden so next you can give that a nice good press especially if it is cotton for my double gauze one I'm not even going to bother giving that a press I'm just going to head into step number three attaching the snap fasteners so you want a male and a female version of each of the snaps and I am going to use my all this is my leather craft all but any sort of sharp object will do just to get that point through there and then you are going to place the top and either the female or the male, and you are going to use your pliers to press it in place. Then you're going to create another hole. And so this is the reason why we put that interfacing in it's just so we have a bit more durability where these snaps are going. Make sure you put them on facing the right way, because if you have the top of the snap um, facing where the male and female need to connect, it's not going to snap in place. So just double check before snapping it in place. And now for the final reveal. Let it go, what's the use in holding on? Can we find a way where we could spend some time alone? You know where to find me, you know which way to go. As long as you love me, we'll be singing all night long. So take a minute to hold me. I want to now these are fantastic to make up to have a nice cute wardrobe for baby or puppy. And the fun thing is, is you can match them to the baby layette. So any of your shirts or onesies that you're making, or even blankets, you can match these cute little bandanas to, and they are perfect baby gifts. If you have someone that is going to be having a baby or you yourself are having a baby, they are great to have on hand and they also make fantastic puppy gifts. So if you enjoyed this video, do give it a big thumbs up. That really helps me out. And if you enjoyed it, do consider subscribing and check me out on my socials at Sheer Stitchery on Instagram and Facebook. Until next time, makers, let's get our sewspiration on.